welcome, I'm the Code Pilot. In this episode, we're going to be looking at smooth side scrolling backgrounds. Now, then, I'll show you what I mean with my brilliant props. Here we are. Here's the display surface. And we've got our image, and it, we start off there, don't we? And that's all you can see. And then it scrolls that way. And then we get another of the same image, and we tag it onto it like that. And then again, and it does that forever. Yeah. Now then, it's, it sounds really easy and the code is really simple, but explaining it is a little bit, bit more in depth. So what we'll do first is we'll, we'll get our background image. So background equals pi game image load. Uh, it's called mountains, and in the in another episode called "Important: Convert Your Images," I explained about converting any images that you load into a into a format that Pygame understands. Because when you convert it and blit it, it, it's just like lightning. If you don't, then it's really really slow. Anyway, so we've got our background image, and now we need a background position. So we'll call it X, and we'll start off with background zero. So now let's blitz the background image to the display surface. Uh, the X coordinate and the Y, so we want it at the top of the display surface, and then that should be it. So let's run that and have a look, see what it does. No, wrong one. There we are. So as you'd expect, it's a static image within the display surface. And if we go down to here, x equals zero, so that's all we're seeing of that image. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter if the, the image goes outside of the display surface because Pygame will not will not draw that. It won't waste its CPU power drawing that, so you don't have to worry too much. Now because we've got uh, when, because we want it to scroll, we need to change the X coordinate, don't we? So if we want it to go to the left, as though the player was walking to the right, then we need to reduce the X coordinate by one. So X, X minus equals one. Now what we should see is that the display surface moves to the left. Uh, the background image moves to the left. There we go. It's moving, but there's a problem, and you'll see there. What's happened is that the what's happened is that the image is run out. Now you'd have to have an infinitely long image in order for this to work. So it's just gone off like that, and it's carrying on into the distance. So in order for us to display an image so that it stays within display surface, what we need to do is we need to rep use the X coordinate, but have it reference a position within the width of our background image. Now we've got to use an operator called the modulus and it's a very, very useful operator and you'll, you'll see in a second. So we'll, we'll get a new variable called relative X and we'll say that it equals the modulus of background width. So what, what this is doing is it's dividing X by the width of the background image and then returning the remainder. So now relative x only references between zero and the width of the display surface. So x can be any number now. We'll just change that to rel, rel x. We'll save it and we'll see what happens. Ah, it's not moving. Well, that was obvious because what's happening is if we just go over to, oh, well, just one second, because it changes in a sec. It just appears from the left there. 
Now, why is that? Let's go over to here. So, on the first one, x equals zero. Now, the modulus of x, uh, modulus of zero, is zero. So, it it first displays an image there, and then what happens is it goes to minus one. Now, the the modulus of minus one against the width of the display surface is the width of the display surface. So the x then becomes over here. The relative x position comes over here. And then it starts to go like that. And that's why we get a delay before we can see it on, the, on there. And then when it gets to there, it goes back. So what we need to do is we need to deduct the width of the, the, of the, the background image so that our relative position is here, but we display the image over here. So that now, when we reduce the the relative x position, it should go like that. And then when it gets to there, it goes back and then displays it there. So let's go back to the code and do that. So we'd, all we have to do is we have to deduct the background width from the relative x position. And let's give that a whirl and see what happens. Aha! So now it's scrolling, but we still have a small problem, don't we? When we get to the end of the of the background image, we still got that, that bit where there, you see? It's still got that streakiness, but at least the image goes back to where it should be when it's completed its cycle. If we go over to the, if we go over to here, it's going, and we've got this gap, haven't we? And that gap gets bigger and bigger. And when it goes to zero, it goes back here and then goes like that. And we've still got that gap. Now remember, this point here is where the relative x position is. So if the relative x position is less than our display surface width, then we can just tag another one onto the end of it at relative x. So there we go. When that gets to there, that'll disappear. And then relative x is less than the display surface width. So we tag another one on. So let's go back to the code and have a look at that. Get rid of that. Uh, so if rel x is less than the display surface width, then we can blit another bit, blit another background image onto the end at relative x and zero. Okay, so let's save that and see what happens. Whee! Still scrolling, so it's it's still working. And hopefully we won't be able to tell because obviously it'll be still it'll be seamless. And it's important when you're making a seamless uh, back scrolling background that the image is actually seamless, seamless. Which means that when it gets to the end, the the beginning and the end are the same. There we go. You can't even tell you can't even tell where it starts and where it ends. So what we'll do is we'll just quickly add. A little line so we know where the end of the image is. So um, pi game draw line uh, where we're displaying it to the display surface. Uh, next parameter is the color. We'll give it a red color. Uh, that then it's the first coordinates. So uh, rel x zero rel x the height and a width of three so it makes it easy to see in the video okay so let's give that a whirl and then we'll find out it should show us where the seam is let's have a quick sip of coffee ah here we go is it going to come up yes there it is so that's where it ends and that's where it starts brilliant well, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and remember, if you don't like it, then 
please say so as well. If you've got any questions about what we've done, if you've got any improvements you can recommend, anything, just whatever you want, just write it in. As long as it's not anything insulting. <laughs> I'm, well, I can live with it. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you for the next tutorial.